Okay, we're sitting here on the floor deck. Uh, we have a wing on wing situation here. Um, and I, if we look up, you can see um, how it's set up. We have the Genoa on the one side, and it's fermented uh, out to the side of the boat. And then we have the Code Zero, of course. And Stephen's sitting here on the front deck by the the sails. Uh, let's go ask him about this. Yep. Yeah, we uh, unfortunately had a mishap and blew our, our asymmetrical, which I'm now using as an extremely expensive pillow. Um, so we had to adjust. Uh, we're out in the middle of the ocean, so we can't pull into the nearest sail repair shop. So the spinnaker is out of action. So what we've done is we've got about 18 to 20 knots of trade winds. So I set up a wing and wing situation so that we can run dead downwind. Um, with the wind speed we've got, it looks like we're averaging about 200 miles a day. We've got the sea behind us and we've got the wind directly behind us. It's my, it's the, the advantages are that if you do get a squall or something, you can fill one or the other sail to quickly reduce sail area. So it's very manageable. Uh, the disadvantages are is that it's basically dead downwind. It's only effective for dead downwind, whereas an asymmetrical would give you 20 or 30 degree angle either way. So uh, this is the best setup we could figure out right now. We've got good boat speed, we've got good wind speed, so everyone's comfortable. And uh, you know this is a, this is good trade wind sailing setup, wing on wing with two head sails. So just to show you how we've managed to wing and wing the, the, the jib, what we did is we tightened the jib really tight and then we took this line and tied it to the crew of the jib and we ran it down to the midship cleat over here. So we have this line to the midship cleat and onto the crew. Then we eased we eased the, 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 normal sh uh, the normal sheet so that the, the sail could open. So this way, we're using the beam of the boat to keep the sail open and full. For this side, with our code zero, we've, we run the code zero in a normal way, but we've trimmed it for dead downwind. The sheet for our code zero comes back to here, if you follow me. So the sheet for the code zero comes all the way down through its normal block and onto the winch. So this is where we will control our, our, our code zero. So that is how, if you look from here, you will see both the sails deployed. So that's how we're controlling this thing. It's giving us pretty good downwind speed right now. So for full control of both sails so that we can furl them away really easily and control things, we have our jib on its furler. So there's the roller furler for the jib. And our code zero is also on a furling line. 
So this way we have control from back there, back at the cockpit. If we want to, if we want to f uh, de deploy, or if we want to uh, f uh, fill away either of these sails. So that just gives us really good control. So, Florian, you, you're a, a race racing guy, so you guys don't really use this cruising setup that that we use, the go the goose wing. Uh, no, we don't. We don't use goose goose wing or wing on wing setup with sails like that because we usually go with an angle to get as much speed as possible and that's why on this <laughs> Caramel Zurich 3 it's an experience to have a wing on wing setup for sail going downwind it's very nice 